The Bulls are third at the moment, Leeds are second just now. And they remain the major threat to St Helens dream of a fifth Super League title. This is the scene inside the Bradford Bulls dressing room. These two clubs have contested the last two Old Trafford Grand Finals. There has been one win apiece. But the Leeds Rhinos, they're under greater scrutiny now than at any time during Tony Smith's three seasons at Headingley. They've been well beaten in two of the last three in Super League and they've conceded 19 tries in the process. This is the Bradford Bulls lineup. A little bit of rejigging late on because of the sickness bug sweeping the dressing room. So Marcus St. Hilaire goes to full back. Carl Price comes in on the wing. There is no Michael Withers. Ben Harris, Shontaine Harpy, Leslie Vinacola, the three quarter line. Yistin Harris up against his former club, of course, the captain, and Paul Deacon, the scrum half. The forwards, it's Stuart Field and Terry Newton and Andy Lynch. Brad Myers comes into the side in the second row. He was due to start on the bench. He'll partner Paul Johnson and Jamie Langley is the loose forward. And the bench is occupied by Joe Vanganar, Ian Henderson, who wasn't named in the original 17, Stanley Jean and young Matt James. The coach is Steve McNamara. One notable absentee from that Bradford side, Brett Ferris, who scored the last-minute try against the Leeds Rhinos at Headingley just before Easter. They go with Lee Smith at fullback. Then it's Scott Donald, Chef Walker, Keith Senior and Danny Williams, Danny Maguire alongside Rob Burrow. Nick Scruton takes his place in the front row alongside Matt Diskin and Jamie Jones Buchanan. Jamie Peacock, the former Bradford captain, he moves into the second row to partner Gareth Ellis and Kevin Sinfield is the skipper. And on the bench, it's Ryan Bailey, Shane Millard, Willie Poaching and Chris Feather. The coach is Tony Smith. There's no place in the 17 for Ali Lauertiti. Well, Kevin Sinfield back from injury against Rochdale in the Cup last weekend. He got the Man of the Match award and he will no doubt pep up this Leeds Rhinos side. Interesting night for Chev Walker, who we just saw going through the screen a moment ago. He turned down a new deal at Headingley this week. Bath Rugby Union, Brian Noble is a big fan, and Melbourne Storm, I'm sure they are all interested in the services of Chev Walker. Big crowd at Otzel as the Rhinos come out, but a mooted arrival on the scene compared to what we're about to hear for the Bradford Bulls, I am sure. It's the biggest night so far for Steve McNamara, Super League's youngest coach. He goes up against Tony Smith, who made him captain of Huddersfield during his playing days. And there is a look of determination on the faces of these Bradford players. They didn't play well at St Helens in the Cup, and out they come to a real crescendo of noise. This is the sixth game in the post Brian Noble era. Two wins, three defeats, including that 42-18 reverse in the Challenge Cup at St Helens last Saturday. For Steve McNamara now, it's okay. Old Trafford or bust. Steve Ganson is the man in the middle. The skies have cleared, the sun's streaming down, it's almost a summer's night, whispering quietly. Big crowd, great game in prospect. Certainly is Eddie and I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure that the players will give us a wonderful treat. As you said, it's getting pretty warm out there. It will be when the ball is getting touched. We're underway. Paul Deacon with the kickoff. Hangs in the breeze. Maguire and first tackle of the night on Nick Scruton. Maguire's the dummy half. They'll come up the middle with Jamie Jones Buchanan. Eager tackling early by the... Leads forwards and Fielding leading the way there as he grounds Matt Diskin. So important for Leeds to get through a good set of six, make sure that they've got a good kick. They're going early. And there was the kick from Sinfield, bounces on the 10 metre line. I think that Leeds have the wind at their backs, if anything, to just at the moment in the first half. The flags on the stand on the opposite side of the field that we watch are standing stiffly on their poles. So how will the kickers utilise that breeze? Kevin Sinfield with the responsibility, first with that wind at his back. This is Stuart Fielding now for Bradford. 
And you talk about kicking and its importance in modern day rugby league. It was almost half an hour before the Bulls got a kick of any real quality in last week in that cup match against St. Helens. And they know that they need better field position if they want to compete with the Rhinos tonight. St. Helens were very good in the cup, but Bradford, to use Steve McNamara's own uh, evidence, they were awful. Well, St. Helens were absolutely sensational, so maybe that is a, a big part. But the man that's just at dummy half there is going to be so important for the Bulls tonight, and that's Terry Newton. I said before the kickoff that you've got to just roll the sleeves up and put some really good hard work, and he will lead the way, will Terry Newton. That was Danny Williams, the 19 year old winger. Lee Smith has dropped back to full-back because Richie Mathers has played his last game for the Rhinos, so Danny Williams gets an extended run in the first team and up against the likes of the Terry Newton tonight, the number 13, the Great Britain International, the former Leeds hooker who made his debut at 17 years of age in April 1996. Good work from Rob Burrow there. You see that uh, Bradford a little bit slow setting up in the first and second marker position. And that's got to be an advantage, it's so low to the ground, it can duck underneath any would-be tackler. On halfway, it's with Kevin Sinfield, who'll hoist the kick again, and that's another high hanger, but... I was going to say it will bounce out, but it doesn't, and Marcus St. Hilaire will run it back. Well, it's uh, about time, I think, that we uh, went down to the press benches to join uh, Dave Hadfield, who is the spokesman for the British press in the... Awarding tonight of the man of the match. Steve McNamara, no doubt, Dave, will be looking for a big game from Justin Harris and Paul Deacon. And Jamie Peacock on his first return to Walsall. He's bound to be under your microscope as well. Yeah, I think Justin and Paul Deacon will both feel they've got a bit of something to prove after some standard performances last week in the Cup at Saints. But their players, whenever they face that sort of situation in their careers, they usually come up with the goods. For Leeds, I think you can bet on Jamie Peacock having a big game. This is a suggestion he's going to be used more as a second rower than a prop tonight. A couple of markers for the future as well. Lee Smith already in at fullback for Richard Mathers. And Chev Walker still out there, but uh, edging towards the end of his Leeds career. Interesting to see how he goes. It's Leeds on the attack with Lee Smith. He can now cement his place as the Leeds fullback. Danny Maguire skipping away from the would be tacklers, but Harris got to him with help from Langley and Myers. He is put to the ground, they know the danger that Maguire poses. There's Jamie Jones Buchanan, now it's with Nick Scruton. Again, three Bradford tacklers get him down, 22 metres away from their line. Diskin, a dummy half, gives it to the diminutive Rob Burrow. Good ball back on the inside and they keep it alive. Here is Lee Smith! And he is just hauled down, 10 metres short of the line. Last tackle here for the Rhinos, it's with Maguire and it's got smuggled away and Bradford have to muscle up in defence and they do on their own line Peacock nearly made it there it was a beautiful little shot off field lovely pass from Kevin Sinfield there but full credit in this Bradford outfit they got back in numbers and that's reminiscent of round nine isn't it the line was penetrated at Headingley but all every time they were able to get back most occasions and prevent the lead side from getting over it interesting the quick speedy small guys for the rhinos taking off from around that play the ball area and finding a few gaps in and around the big bradford forwards here's andy lynch interested spectator tonight at this game for the first time as a neutral is our guest brian noble the wigan coach what do you make of the opening five brian Vigorous, violent in some respects, in respect to the contact that they've got on each other, and that's what you'd expect. Leeds with the win behind him, you'd expect them to get a little bit more field position in respect of their kicks. And that's why we see Bradford in the main kicking from their own half in this arm wrestle stage of the game, and Leeds bringing the ball back round about the 30 and the 40 metre area. But that could change anything. Leeds look really dangerous out of dummy half. They're trying to speed the game up in and around there. Scott Donald in at dummy half this time. He scampers away, gets as far as Brad Myers, who gets a good hit on him. Only two appearances for Myers in the past 12. And here come the Rhinos again in the shape of Keith Senior, he plays the ball to Burrow, here now Jamie Jones Buchanan gets 10 metres, 12 metres inside the Bradford half of the field before he's tackled by Johnson, it's with Maguire, Maguire good ball to Diskin, Diskin oh not forward They'll play the first knock on but that was good build up there but they just held on a little bit too long he really should have shown the dummy which he did and then offloaded there was a huge gap there for Matt Diskin to go through just Lee shows Smith you the just couldn't take the pass in. If it had been a second phase, perhaps that would have been better. 
And problems for Terry Newton. Lost his boot. Yes, so that goes back on. And uh, the referee just waiting for Terry Newton to take his place in the front row of that scrum alongside uh, Andy Lynch and Stuart Fielden. Deacon with the feed then. Centre field, midway inside their own half. It's with Ben Harris. And the tackle made by uh, Chef Walker. Here is Myers again. Oh, that was high and they've missed it. Peacock up over the shoulder of Myers. Well, you may have thought it the shoulder. I'm not so sure it was. They've got away with it. We expected it to be tough, though. Bang. No doubt about it. Should have been a penalty. Bradford still in possession. Tackle number four. Poof. Yes, Peacock did catch him high. It's now with Paul Deacon, who ducks under the challenge. Good defence by Leeds there. You could see how wide they were coming in on the angle. They're forcing down the middle. Neat kick from Justin Harris. There's work here for young Williams to do. And he's got the considerable frame of Carl Price all over him. He's got a big Price play on. has pinched the ball. That's Super one and one. Great piece of skill by Carl Price. Big chance for Bradford. As Harpy steps out of one challenge. Oh, he loved it. He's knocked on. The referee will hand it on to, to the video referee, on. Dave Campbell, to check whether it was a knock on. He wants to see whether it's reefed away, but I think he just loses it. Ball was grounded in goal. He's Rob lost it. A look. No doubt about it. Under the attention <laughs> of Scott Donald, there was no arm there. He was in the process of doing the tackle, and the centre, Shantaine Harpy, has lost the football. This Big. will be no try. Big screen will tell us. No try. Scrum to Leeds. The defending side, knock on by Shantaine Harper. A massive let up there for the Rhinos, not just because of the opportunity to try. There's the one on one steal from Carl Price, but you just can't afford to allow Bradford possession within 10 metres of your try line. We've said it before on Sky Sports, they are the best side at crashing over the line when they get close to it, and the Rhinos are hell bent on keeping them as far away as possible from that line. It's Leeds who are in possession. That was uh, Lee Smith, and he got the ball away to Gareth Ellis. You can see Leeds, they want to get on with the game very, very quickly. Good thinking from Diskin, tried to milk the penalty. Not forthcoming. Paul Johnson definitely didn't get back the 10. The kick from Maguire down centre field will bounce very kindly for Marcus St. Hilaire. And St. Hilaire drives the ball forward. Non playing substitute at Leeds at Headingley just before Easter. And a former Huddersfield teammate of Steve McNamara, Marcus. St. Hilaire. Here is big Leslie Vinacolo, gets the ball away neatly to Brad Myers. Getting through a lot of work is uh, the second row of Myers. Well, the crowd appealing to the referee for a penalty for not standing square, but he says play on and Bradford will. This is Deacon. Scruton with an important tackle, Terry Newton the dummy half, and Newton will try and cut them up. Back to six. Back to zero in the tackle count, yes, it's Brad Myers for the Bulls. Great work from Newton there. Definitely played that, I think by Chef Walker. This is Andy Lynch. Good tackle by Gareth Ellis. Deacon, 20 metres away, finds Terry Newton. Great ball round the corner, Myers. Oh, oh! Yes, for Scott Donald. He's got the speed. Scott Donald. Vinacolo's missed in field and didn't. What an effort from Fielden. The prop forward Fielden has enough common sense to go back, didn't just leave it to his winger by Nicolo, who may have got a slight touch, but what an effort from a prop forward. Here is Williams again. Takes three to bring him down and suddenly leads now at 20 metres away from the Bradford line. Burrow goes wide to Gareth Ellis. And that's the turnover. Well, they missed that, didn't they? They missed the opportunity. It wasn't a clearly run, but look at this here. Donald just put himself between the ball and Harpe. Had to do really the overlap with the Harpe and Vinacolo outside him. First. Great cover again from oh. field. And you see the difference oh. of the styles of these two teams. Leeds a much quicker side, can go the length of the field very, very quickly. Bradford need to Brand. patiently work up field and then bring out the big guns. 
It's Leeds, though, who have pinched Zero. possession back. And here is Diskin. This is a glorious opportunity for the Rhinos. Back on the inside to Peacock. And Peacock is stopped dead yes. in his tracks, Zero. five metres away from the line. Little crisis here for the Bradford Bulls as Diskin waits at dummy half. And he fires the ball to Burrow. And Burrow attacks the line. Oh, that looked forward. He delayed it. They've got away with it. Johnson with the tackle on Gareth Ellis. Burrow again. It's now with Sinfield. And Sinfield with the pass to Maguire. It's open for Maguire. And there is Lee Smith following up. And the referee has handed it on to the video referee again. And he wants to see whether there was some obstruction in the back play. OK. Well, someone slipped. Whether he was pushed, I'm not right sure. It was Myers. Brad Myers is a man that's hit the deck. But was he interfered with or did he just slip? Good offload, good support. The fullback Smith said, I'll have it. Nothing wrong with the grounding, but this is what the video referee will be looking for. I don't think there's anything wrong there. In fact, if anything, Myers has made a lunge forward rather than the other way around. Now watch Myers. He will come into it. No, there's nothing wrong there. This trial will be given. If anything, any movement, it was from Myers. He just wants to make sure, but they stop, and it's Myers that goes in, and I don't think there was any interference at, at all. Or is it on Jamie Langley? It's Jamie Jones Buchanan. Does he not trip over his right leg? That angle shows it's better than from behind the post. It's obscured by the goalpost. Yeah, and we do have to I mean, say whether that's an intentional trip I've, or not. I'm Dave go Campbell's try. decision is pending. No try. That's a big call, but Phil Clark spotted it, and obviously Dave Campbell saw the same. The runner interfered with the defender, the man in front of the ball. Well, he's obviously got them for the trip. Well, he's just the referee has just told the players interference with the defender. You can't see from that particular angle, but maybe on this wide shot, watch out for the leg. That's the only reason I can see why this try has not been given. Oh, he's been a bit unfortunate there, hasn't he? Oh, I mean, that was there was no movement to the leg. I, I think the video referee has made a right mess of that one. Well, I'm thinking back a fortnight. Dare we ask Brian Noble for his opinion on video referees at this moment in time? Um, probably not, no. <laughs> Honest man. Eddie, that was a good tackle there from Scruton. To stop Stuart filling his tracks and pushing back, it's good development for a young front rower. This is Johnson for Bradford. Third. Keep coming, boys. Game matter. Go. Remember, the Bulls beat Leeds 20 points to 18 at Headingley in April. It was their sixth Whoa. win from nine Whoa. in Super League at that point. Out of the cup, though, last weekend. So now the assault Five. begins on a sixth grand final in a row. That's the last tackle. Well, we're just coming into the 12 minute mark, and I tell you something, they have taken a lot of fuel out of each other in the opening minutes. Quickness across the ground then by Lee Smith to collect that kick downfield. It was hanging in the breeze and uh, Lee Smith made fully 40 metres to collect it out of the air. Here is Scott Donald for the Leeds Rhinos, the major close season signing from Manly to replace Mark Calderwood. Whoa, what a hit by Terry Newton on Lee Smith. Oh, that had a big rate cross on it, that one. Oh. <laughs> Newton lined him up, didn't miss either. Here's Keith Senior. Oh! oh senior, that's stolen by Ben Harris! Ben Harris, does he have the legs? Carl Price is out oh, there! He's bombed it! Where? And he's bombed it, he's pulled it down! Well, he's had he'll go to the screen on this, he, he probably won't be able to make a decision. He needs some he's help. It's Leeds head and feet, he, he, feet, he says. Well, he offloaded it straight away. <laughs> And but Robbie Barrow got back here. Why didn't he look for Price? He did too late, Shot and it was a knock-on. It'll be a head and feed to Leeds. Well, they're bombing tries from both angles. Put four points next to Rob Burrow's down there. That's a big play you need from your team when they're under pressure. You know, Leeds do love to offload the ball. It's a style they've been successful with over the last couple of years. But when you do it, you need quick players to get you out of trouble with an interception, and Keith Senior will be so grateful that Burrow was there to help out. Indeed so, and uh, Ben Harris, he just didn't have the legs, but uh, Peacock lined up there by Stuart Fielden. 
Brothers in arms this time last year. Peacock's last movement, last act as the Bradford captain was to lift the Super League trophy at Old Trafford last October. This it, is Jamie Jones Buchanan. It just shows you, though, Eddie, the importance of defence and not just giving up. A few moments ago, we saw the prop forward, Stuart Field, and come back and save a certain try because I think Scott Donald would have made it. And on that occasion, it was Rob Burrow that stopped Harris. Sensational rugby league football from both sides. Here's Big Leslie, and he bounces off Chef Walker. The next three in get him, though. It's not a bad game, Brian, is it? It's a great game, and it's interesting that both defences have been broken by errors or by false pass plays. Either, um, either Leeds or Bradford are making breaks end-to-end -end on the back of something, a play that's unusual or not being controlled. When both teams look controlled as they are now, they both look very, very dangerous. It is Yeston Harris. And now it's Bradford who are caught in possession on the last. It's the turnover. Well, both sides are losing the composure. Okay. Yeah, well, nice. we've spoken about the volume off the terraces at Odsall this year. Maybe it's a bit loud for them tonight. <laughs> Maybe the players can't hear the referee's call. Well, they know that they're coming into each other. I mean, it's real crash tackle stuff. Second. Wonderful to watch, but it has taken a lot of fuel, as I mentioned. They are getting into each other. Jamie Jones Buchanan manages to get the offload away to Sinfield, but uh, he's gobbled up by Terry Newton. It's 50 50 in terms of possession to both sides, and the ball has been in play for 14 and a half minutes out of 15 and a half minutes. That's what makes this game so special. It certainly does, and what a great effort so far from the Leeds fullback, Lee Smith. He's chiming into the three quarter line. He wants the business. Give it to me. Rob Burrow, wide it goes to Senior, further wide then to Danny Williams. The youngster comes in off loads and it gets eventually to Rob Burrow, back to zero in the tackle count. Rob Burrow has started his way through, they might not need the extra six. Wonderful work from Burrow, he actually waves to the referee and says, shouldn't we get six more? Oh. And Sinfield lost it. Maguire. Uh, Maguire is it, sorry. And Maguire and Leslie Vinacolo tangling on the deck. And the referee says, play on. Here's Harpy. Great tackle by it's got to be Jamie Jones Buchanan, but it's a penalty. Hands yeah. in at the play of the ball. And it's getting excitable out there, and so am I, and so is this crowd. And I hope you're feeling the same at home, because whatever you're watching it, this is classic stuff. Calm down. Me or the players? Everybody. OK. Brian Noble's the calmest amongst us. No, don't calm down. <laughs> There's the temperature. Just there stay is within the boundary. Yeah, stop it, how do you speak? Let's get away from where the action is, all right? Straight back in the line, get on with your jobs. Don't want any messing Referee's in Referee's keeping a lid on it. It's the uh, second penalty that Bradford have received. And that's good refereeing from Steve Ganson. Well, he is one official who does say, let's get on with it, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, and he just says straight to the point, nothing wrong in the back play, get on with it, we play rugby league, and that is what they're offering us. Referee wants the ball to, or the play rather, to be restarted from exactly the right spot. And, that was and here good, is Lynch. That was a good ploy by the official as well. That gives a few extra seconds to calm the nerves. So much at stake, not only in terms of... Uh, the locality here, but also in terms of the top of the Super League table, where St Helens are riding high at the moment, but these two looking to launch the bid to overtake them, and it's Johnson. Ball out the back door, Carl Price does ever so well to come off the whitewash. Great to see Johnson, isn't it? And no room to move, but Mr Price, twinkle toes, got him back on the inside. Harris trying to dart his way through the middle, that's Yistin Harris, the former lead skipper. Plays the ball to Lynch, he finds Deacon, and Deacon running the angle. Good play, though, by Gareth Ellis, there was nowhere for him to go then. Last one here for Bradford, and the kick from Newton is far too strong. Well, not the best end to a very good attacking move by the Bulls. But the play before... Paul Deacon was running across looking for someone to First. offload and not oh, one shit. person wanted to even okay. think about coming back on a different angle. It's with Keith Senior. 
for the Rhinos. Interesting thing about them, they won their first title in 32 years at Old Trafford in 2004, of course. Ten of the 17 that night, products of their academy system. If Chev Walker, who has turned down the new deal this week, if he leaves, it will mean that eight of that title-winning side will have moved on before the end of 2006. They are dismantling this uh, championship-winning side with remarkable speed. Circumstances, of course, maybe led to many of those decisions, but um, what is it, 18 months, a long time in rugby league? This is Carl Price. There's a bit of pressure on Carl Price tonight, Eddie, similar for the reason he replaces Marcus Bay on that right wing. And Marcus Bay is so important to the Bulls because he's one of the main goal forward men. He gets them downfield into a position from which players like Harpy and Vianacolo can come up with the tries. So they need somebody to replace Bay's metres. Stanley Jean is on the pocket battleship from uh, Papua New Guinea. Here is Leslie Vinacolo, rolls over the top of Maguire first time. The one thing about Stanley Jean, he will bring a lot of entertainment and create a lot of problems, though that wasn't the best offload. Newton wasn't aware of that one. Chris, good effort. It's the last tackle. And Harris with the hoof up the middle, but it comes back at him. Oh, at such is the strength of the wind. Reclaimed by Harris, in it goes to St. Hilaire, who will hoof it down again, and again it hangs in the breeze. Easy then for Danny Williams. Well, it's, it's incredible, the strength of this win. I think the speed of the match is starting to show now. Both sides have simply been sprinting from the kickoff, and it had to tell. Leeds have adopted that different style. They've not moved the ball around as much. They've tried to go down the middle with that speed, and somebody's going to crack in a few minutes. Bradford with the wind in their faces and Leeds with the wind at their backs. Well, I'm sure Steve McNamara, the Bradford coach, will be quite happy. You saw their quick shot of the uh, the flags on the stand on the far side. It really is a raging wind. And he knows that it's got to be an advantage, especially when the teams are getting tired. And it's with Burrow, who stopped for some reason, almost gave himself up then, or gave something away to the referee. This is Williams. Last tackle here for Leeds Rhinos with Maguire. There's a crossfield kick. That hit the bar. Certainly did. It was on its way out, dead in goal. This is Saint Hilaire doing a good job from fullback. Well, you know the kick from Maguire across. There wasn't many of the Leeds players running forward. And that shows you how tired they're looking at the moment. And I'm not surprised. Ian Henderson. Third, Off the bench tonight, 30th appearance for the Bulls in the Cup last week. Substitute for a seventh match in a row. Harpy gets the pass away to Langley. Langley goes over the top of Lee Smith. Reinforcements arrive in the shape of Maguire. It's with Deacon. They have some room on the outside. Harris with the kick looking for Price. It's too long. Great option. He could see that there was no one at home. But what about the quality of Shantane Harpy before that? The ability to make the half break and then look straight away. There was no one in attendance. Shantane Harpy, this is his 30th consecutive appearance. The New Zealand international. Look at this for quality. Half break and support. Tremendous stuff. Yes, Harpy, probably one of the Kiwis that uh, we will see in the test against Great Britain at St Helens on June the 27th and we'll be talking the test with our guest Brian Noble the Great Britain coach and Brian McLennan the New Zealand coach who is over here at the moment having a look at these uh, Super League New Zealanders and here to promote the test as well and uh, he'll be talking to us during the half-time break here here's Chef Walker Sinfield Drive forward. You know, there's hardly been a stoppage in this half so far. <laughs> there hasn't. Diskin waits at dummy half. Ten metres inside his own half. Finds Rob Burrow. Burrow then back on the inside to Sinfield, who flings the pass in field to Chris Feather. Diskin again. Last tackle, still inside their own half. High kick from Sinfield, that's got the wind behind it. That bounces dead in goal. 
Returning from injury to the Super League, uh, Kevin Sinfield returned in the cup tie last week. He has missed the last six in this Super League. There's the news of the Test match, Britain against New Zealand, Tuesday, 27th of June, 7.30, Sky Sports 1. Looking forward to it, Brian? Really am looking forward to it. I think all the players are looking forward to it as well, both Great Britain and the resident New Zealand people. It's going to be a full-on Test match. Clash against class, a bit like this one tonight. It'll be as vigorous and exciting as this one's been. Hope so. Here is Vinacolo, who will doubtless figure for the Kiwis. Stanley Jean to Deacon. Vanganard, another man with New Zealand qualifications, of course. Henderson, good scampering run from Ian Henderson. Stanley Jean. It opens up for Stanley. Not for long, Gareth Ellis there to bring him down. 24 and a half minutes gone, we await the first points at Odsall. As Harris pumps the ball dead in goal. Bit of a wasted effort and he knows the Bradford captain would have wanted something a little bit better than that. But the pace of it, and not surprisingly, when they take the tap on the 20, that it's the wingers that are coming into Cardiff forward. Ellis again now, four leads, gets gotta, almost to the 40-metre line. I've got to be honest with you, Eddie, I'm, I'm glad that you're talking to the New Zealand and Great Britain coach at half-time. I need a rest, I don't think I can do it. Oh, Maguire slips the net, important tackle by Harpy. Willie Poaching. Chef Walker picks it up, somehow hangs on, flings the ball in field, brilliantly picked up off the floor by Lee Smith. Looked a bit high from Harpy. Certainly caught him. He felt it, Lee Smith. He's gone down in a heap. This is Sinfield. Flat pass finds Gareth Ellis. Great pass out the back to Rob Burrow. And Burrow will come up the middle. It's going to take something special to break either defence. There's a late tackle by Harpy going right into the fullback's face, Lee Smith. Maguire dabs the ball along the deck. It's picked up by Leslie Vinacolo. Good tackle by Willie Poaching low down. Marcus St. Hilaire to run the ball back. It's a good game. Eddie, I don't think we can appreciate that both the pressure that both of these sides are under. Having to bring the ball forward, catch it at full speed when you've got defenders in front of you. Just Hold desperate here, here not to make a mistake. Both teams just trying to get to the other end of the field. Oh, here we go. Good hands from for Big Joe. What about that take from Vanganar? Plucked it out of the air. Here is Harris. More reason than many in the Bradford side to show up well here tonight on, against his former club. And Ian Henderson with the kick, fielded by Lee Smith. Vanganar and Deacon with the tackle on the young fullback. Some Bradford injury news from Bill. Bit of concern on the Bulls' sidelines about the fitness of Brad Myers, who came off a short time ago. He's only just come back, in fact, uh, to the side after a medial knee ligament injury. You can just see the strapping on his uh, right knee there, and he's just uh, being nursed back, really. And he wasn't due to start tonight, in fact, but because of this virus that they've had, Steve McNamara had to rejig things. So maybe Brad Myers just being handled a little bit calmly tonight. 13 minutes away from half time. Nil nil here at Odsall as Leeds attack again with Maguire. Finds poaching. Deacon all over him. Finished off by Johnson. That's the last one, says referee Mr. Ganson. And Maguire with a crossfield kick, bouncing awkwardly, but well taken in the end by Yistin Harris. I don't know whether you heard on the referee's microphone just about two or three minutes ago, he shouted, Good game. I think it's an understatement, isn't it, from the referee? I think you may have got it wrong, Eddie. I think he was saying, Good game by the full back. <laughs> Good game by both fullbacks, by all the wingers, no, all the centres. It's a great game. No, I mean a gain forward with an N. Mm. Oh, an N for Nelly. Mm. I don't think so. I think Mr. Ganson said he enjoyed <laughs> and he is enjoying a good game, as we all are. Well, he's taking uh, a big part in it as well. Deacon with the kick down the line. It does not find touch. Lee Smith sees to that. And here is Williams. First, back it up, no, it's not. It's uh, Matt James. My apologies. This is Bailey. Oh, oh big tackle by Justin Harris. <laughs> Senior for Leeds. Third, keep coming. Hold. How long can these defences hang on? I mean, they, they've just been put to the test all the time. Great run again from this little fella. Yeah, Burrow is looking very, very busy tonight, and he's had a great season so far. Sinfield, Maguire, Feather. 
Last tackle for Leeds, midway inside the Bradford half. Sinfield kicked down the line. Too deep. Brian, I know the scoreboard says nil-nil, but if you had to say which side was in front on a points decision, who would you go for right now? I'd probably give it a split, even split, even on the nil-nil, but the, the thing that's happening there, Leeds are just running excitingly out of dummy half and look like making a break every time. By play four and five, they're just getting half fingers on them, Bradford. When Bradford make a half a break, it's the same story. They just can't manage to stay at Leeds end, Leeds end of the field, you know, with the quality of their last plays. They've kicked a few out on the full, which given Leeds a reason to get back down the other end. That's the only difference at the moment. Mine goes back to 12 months ago, exactly 12 months ago when... Uh, or was it two years ago? Two years ago when uh, Leeds were up at the KC Stadium against Hull. It was nil-nil at half-time in that match. It was a great contest and Leeds ran away with it in the end. Vanganar just thumps Maguire to the deck. Here is Langley. Langley stepping out of the challenges again. Important ankle tap that was by Miller. Here is Henderson, down the short side. Steps out of the challenge from Millard. Invitation for Vinacolo to chase. And oh, Scott Donald to the rescue. <laughs> Referee has heard the protest from Leeds. Joshua's claiming knock on by Bradford. They're saying a knock on by Vinacolo. It was. Picks it up and then knocks it straight out. Simple knock on. Originally he said, it was going to be a goal line dropout. Now he is having a word with the touch judge, the video referee having a look at it as well. Yeah, and that right. earpiece in Mr. Ganson's ear will be put to good use. He'll put the scrum down, no doubt about it. The big fella, Vanicola, got a hand to it. He'll be a very relieved man, though, with the fullback Lee Smith, who I must say in this half has had an absolute wonderful, wonderful game. Should be the turnover, shouldn't it? It was on the last tackle, all this. Well, it will be if it is. But he didn't go to the referee, I think he just said, the video referee rather, I think he just said, let's have a look at it. So anyway, we, everybody knows what's going on by the big screen. Good stuff. I think they were quite happy with it, both sides will say, you know, give us a chance to have a bit of a breather. <laughs> Good stuff from the Bulls too, a bit of danger threat really with that kick, wasn't it? Hard for the Rhinos to deal with, I know Vanacolo knocked on, but at the full back when you've been out of breath, working your socks off for 30 minutes like Lee Smith, the last Second. thing you want is a difficult bouncing ball in front of you, and Leslie Vanacolo stood behind it. Here's Shane Millard, his last Four. appearance at Odsall was in the relegated no witness side that got a 25-all draw here last June. Here's Lee Smith again, full of running, full of enthusiasm, 19 years of age. Now then, it is with uh, Sinfield. Sinfield with a little dink over the top, looking for Maguire. Oh, it bounced perfectly, but well claimed by Marcus Saint-Hilaire. Not surprisingly, both sides that are adopting the kicking game when it gets to the last, because virtually they know that it's impossible to get through the defence, but they'll be tiring, maybe they... Just a lack of concentration psychologically, they might just get a little bit, bit mentally tired in the final minutes. Is there a chink in the armour of either of these two sides as we approach half-time? Deacon. Big collision on the halfway line, the last tackle. That was uh, Matt James of the Bradford Bulls. The kick downfield is from Justin Harris, and that's against the wind, so that will stay. That has to be run back by Scott Donald, he obliges. Makes 13 very good metres forward, the Leeds wing. Langley and Deacon with the tackle. Well, if there's any tennis fans out there, they'll have enjoyed this because it's it's end-to-end -end stuff, isn't it? Third. Hold it. What an effort from both sides. And what a good decision by the referee to allow play on there. He has let it flow as Ganson. Full credit to him. Senior for Leeds up the middle. I don't think I've ever seen Keith Senior do that much work in 32 minutes of a match. Really rolled his sleeves up, got involved, run from the dummy half. Kick from Millard will be too deep again. I don't know whether it's easier to play with this wind at your back, Phil, than it is to play with the wind in your face, because uh, a lot of the Leeds kicks have been far too deep, haven't they? To use steve O's tennis analogy, they just happen to get the ball over the net at the other, <laughs> other moment, aren't they? <laughs> they Let the other one deal with it. OK. 
And look at them walking back. Yeah, it's Bradford are in no rush, are they? Time for new balls. This is Carl Price for the Bradford Bulls. Seven minutes to half time. Brian, it was nil nil at Salford in the cup tie this time last week. There's some good defences around for the first half, but I just think that Leeds are really, really trying to punish Bradford in and around the rook with their dummy half yeah. running. And I think your, your question about the wind is it's more often easy enough to run fast out, out of the wind with the wind at your back, but it's easier to get back on side in relation to getting back in the defensive line. And it's probably easier with your pass players. So Bradford will be looking for looking forward to quickening the game up and tempoing the game up out dummy half themselves in the second half. Maybe the players of uh, both sides knew that we had you and Brian McLennan as our guests at halftime, so they didn't want to give us too much to analyse during the halftime break, eh? We can no, concentrate okay. on that test match. I, I think there's plenty to analyse. <laughs> well, you know what I mean. All in, thrilling, <laughs> great game, and, and who's going to crack? Okay, That's the question. Go. Well, talk about it now, Brian. <laughs> You should be talking internationals at half time. Well, I just think that Leeds are okay, be happy to get to half time, but I think Bradford will be the happier side because they've been half fractured. When Bradford have put a couple of past two pass plays through, this is the danger for them. Here he goes, Rob Burrow. St. Hilaire's missed him. Can Carl Price get in? No! The crack appears, and Rob Burrow is the man who produced it. Terrific speed off the mark from little Rob Burrow. He's played a vital role as a goal kicker in the absence of Kevin Sinfield. But boy, that was a try out of absolutely nothing. He took responsibility on his own shoulders then. Certainly did, and good work from Senior. Pulled him in, good to the offload. We said it would take something special. And boy, this is... This is... Special. He has been a thorn in the side so often. Full credit to Bradford on all occasions. They've been able to get numbers back. But talk about backing yourself. I'm going for the corner. Catch me if you can. Beep, beep is there. There's no answer to speed, is there, Phil? You could put eight points next to his name, couldn't you? He saved a try earlier on. He's just come up with another four points. They scored more tries from their own half than any other side in Super League, and you've just seen why. Offload and players like Burrow with the pace to go, 50, 60 metres. Fantastic effort from him. There are men on that pitch almost twice his weight, and at times he's had to contend with trying to tackle them and stop show them. One, he's played one. to his advantage there. Bit of space, few tiring players, and pressed the accelerator. Well, Kevin Sinfield, he got three from three with the boot against Rochdale in the Cup last week. He hasn't kicked a goal in Super League for the last six matches. 36 goals, though, from 42 attempts this year. One of the most accurate kickers in the Engage Super League, this fellow, the Leeds captain. Happy to take a breath, really. Difficult kick, but wind at his back, remember, this will swirl towards the posts. Drags it across, great kick from Kevin Sinfield. Leads ahead by six points to nil here at Odsall. Tremendous stuff, really. And you were speaking earlier about the fact that both sides were gritting it, they had to share the work. And the centre, Keith Senior, did just that. He took the ball up just like a prop forward or a second row in the middle of the park, had the audacity to offload to this fella, who was having a fine season. He wants a Great Britain shirt, Brian. Keeps coming up with plays like that is a chance, hasn't he? That was superb play. On the back of what we talked about, Lee's just running out of dummy half, finding the offload and troubling the Braff and Falls in and around the middle. But that's great speed, that's great desire, and as Phil quite rightly points out, it's not just the four points he scored, what about the four points he said on a dead set try from Ben Harris? Well, Leeds are seeking a third consecutive win at Odsall under their coach Tony Smith. They hadn't lost, or they haven't lost here since October 2003. But against the Bulls in Super League and playoffs, it's just 10 wins from 34 meetings for the Leeds Rhinos. You know, I get the impression now, because they've done it so often, that Leeds are quite happy to let it go dead in goal, so they can just face up on that 20 tap. Okay. They know they've got the, the advantage of the wind, but they also know, and look at the Bradford players having to walk back, they're out on their feet. Look at Leeds. Quickly out of the 
the blocks for the tackle. Stanley Jean made only five metres ground forward then. Here is Deacon. And it comes wide this way to Jamie Langley. Shantane Harpy. And Lynch drives it forward for Good. the Bulls. And again. This is an important Good. time for Tony Smith, the Leeds coach. He'll get the message out and say, look, no silly penalties. You know, just keep that defence pretty solid. Oh, keep, coming, mate. keep coming in on the angle, oh. forcing them down the middle if they can. Bulls on halfway. Harris gets them over the halfway line. Offloads then to Marcus St. Hilaire. Little gap opened up briefly. Hey. Millard slammed the door. This is the last tackle. And there's the dink over the top. And Lee Smith not interested, just allows the ball to trickle into touch. And Leeds will take head and feet at the scrum. Not a bad little option there from Anderson, the hooker, on the short blind side. Had a tremendous year last season and uh, maybe not coming up to the same standard so far this year. But okay, I think you can say that about right, Robert, come on. a lot of the players on both sides. Ian Henderson, it's his seventh appearance in a row off the bench since Terry Newton returned to the fold. First. We're in the last minute of the first half. And that was Williams, halted by that man Henderson. Steve McNamara on his way down. It's a trip that's been taken by Brian Noble many, many times in the past. He's not got too far to go tonight, though. Just next door to our studio to talk to Brian McLennan. That's Brian Noble. Steve McNamara with more important things on his mind. Kick downfield is, again, a little long. Well, as I say, they'd be quite happy with that. They've been very effective with that solid defence. And I have to give credit to this referee, Steve Ganson. It's the best I've seen him referee this year, without a doubt. Ten seconds remaining of this first half first. that uh, Leeds have Hold. won by six points to nil unless there's something dramatic about to happen in the last few seconds. And the tacklers from Leeds see that that isn't going to happen. The referee calls that time and it's Rob Burrow's try that separates the two teams. Six minutes before the break, Burrow's try out on the far touch line, improved by Kevin Sinfield and the Rhinos looking to cement second spot in the table. They are a point ahead of the Bradford Bulls, who are third at this moment in time. If they hang on to this situation, they'll increase the lead over their local rivals to three points. Cup distractions over for a week or so. Super League is on centre stage again. Bank holiday weekend, three games. This one at Bradford, Wigan Saints tomorrow at 7, Sky Sports 1, and Monday, Salford Harlequins, Sky Sports 2 at 7 as well. And as usual, two from the NRL in Australia, the live game in the morning, Brisbane against Canterbury, Chris Warren and company will enjoy your company, 10.30 Sky Sports 2, same channel, same time, NRL Sunday for Parramatta and the Roosters. Half time here at the big kickoff to the weekend, and it's Bradford Bulls nil, the Leeds Rhinos six, Burroughs try, and Sinfield's goal. All we have to show for 40 minutes really hard work by the players of both these clubs, as these statistics will tell you. Would you believe that we are seeing the two best attacking sides in the Super League on show tonight? Leeds have so far now scored 82 tries this year, they have the best attack. Bradford, 71, theirs is the second best attack. And you might know, after saying things like that, that it is the defence of the two teams that have stood up strong from the first whistle. Mr Ganson is just about ready to get us underway for the second half. And uh, this time, Bradford will have the benefit of the wind at their backs, but... Uh, just looking at those flags over on the far side again, which is about the only gauge we've got. The wind has dropped just a little. This is Matt James, made his Super League debut at Hull three weeks ago. A skillful prop forward, the youngster who is highly rated here at Oddsall. Henderson finds Johnson. Opening set of six of the second half. Bradford in possession, the tackle completed by Kevin Sinfield. Ian Henderson to Yistin Harris. Gets the balls over halfway, but only just. 
and Henderson will float it left and find Deacon finding Stanley Jean on the burst halted by Walker's tackle and completed by Danny Maguire last tackle so kick here from okay. Deacon and uh, that's the problem that uh, Leeds had in the first half the kicks if they go high with this wind behind them it will billow the ball over the dead ball line well I think they're taking the tactics that was shown by the Rhinos in that first 40 they were quite happy to uh, ensure it went over get a good lineup in defense on to match when they tap on the 20 interesting to see how Leeds utilize the wind against them well, they maybe take the short blind and just kick into touch get field position maybe force the error this is Sinfield for Leeds three tackles still inside their own half Millard to Maguire and here is Lee Smith now pushes away from a couple and uh, Matt James was in quickly with Jamie Langley Millard good ball from dummy half finds poaching the 10 meters inside the Bradford half now on this the last tackle here's Millard they look for Sinfield with the kick it's off the back of Lynch surely not a charge down yes the referee wipes the tackle count down Andy Lynch had his back to the play here well, I can't see why he's wiped it away because as you're right well he said it he he was turning away made no attempt to go for that Oh, this can be tempted as a charge down. It's beyond belief with his leg anyway. Well, it is, and uh, the referee has given Leeds another set of six as Williams take the tackle. This is Millard, and now it's Sinfield, and the runner is Chris Feather. And Feather stands and gets the ball away to Millard. And Millard is halted by a combination of James and Henderson. Sinfield to Rob Burrow. They'll have to watch him as he proved in the first half with the opening try of this match Millard 12 meters away good set of six here four leads Maguire finds Sinfield on one knee and that was played out it's picked up by Poaching and Poaching gets over for the try for Leeds Willie Poaching with the try at the end of the second set of six so Mr Ganson's decision has paid off handsomely for the Leeds Rhinos but there is an element of controversy he had his back to the play when the alleged charge down came we'll no doubt take another look at that but Willie Poaching on his 140th appearance for Leeds has come up with a very important try this should never be back to six as you can see quite clearly the front forward Lynch turned his back hit the leg full credit though Sinfield took full advantage the shutdown Maguire had a chance to get it away it was a little bit deep it got a deflection and look at the upper body strength from poaching he has a habit isn't he this fella of coming up with a try when they really really need it just got the ricochet but take nothing away from the strength mr poaching has done it again the rhinos in the ascendancy well you give this team 10 tackles which you see is exactly what they got any team that scores over 80 tries in half a season is going to come up with a try. What was great was the fact that Burrow and Maguire both took on the defensive line. And when you look at the highest standard of rugby league at the moment in the world, perhaps, the uh, state of origin match, that's what the best halfbacks do over there. That's what the best halfbacks are doing now for Leeds. Poaching the try scorer, the referee had to be absolutely convinced that Andy Lynch had made a play at the ball as he attempted to charge the kick from Sinfield down. He plainly was convinced of that because Leeds now have a 12 point to nil advantage here at Odsall. Any comment, gentlemen, about the charge down? Well, he got it wrong, simple as that. Perhaps the first mistake that Mr. Ganson has made throughout the game, and if that was the case throughout the entire season, I would be very happy indeed. A mistake, in your opinion, Steve O'Brien? Well, the only thing you can say in Mr. Ganson's defence is perhaps that Lynch went towards the ball with Fielding to create kick pressure. Whether he turns his back or not, is that deemed to be kick pressure? Is that deemed to be trying to charge it down? Well, he decided, Mr. Ganson, obviously, that Lynch had played at it or made some attempt. He wiped the tackle count down, and as Phil says, you give Leeds ten tackles, and invariably they will score a try. Here is Burrow. They're 12-0 ahead now. The Rhinos, it's becoming a big hill for Bradford to climb. Well, I suppose in many ways it has a habit of just evening itself out, doesn't it? 
In my opinion, early in that first half, the Smith no try should have been given. So maybe that has squared the ledger somewhat. I think I said that that was a Jamie Peacock try at half time. I apologise, it's Lee Smith. Bill is down at ground level with Mark O'Neill. Yeah, one of the Leeds players sitting this one out, shoulder problem, and given the fact that Bradford had so much dominance in the first half, for Leeds to be 12 0 up at this stage is no mean feat, is it? No, it's not. I think, uh, you know, they've hung in there really well. It's been an arm wrestle, and we're lucky to get, get away with the try there at the end. And if, if we can just play it down in the other half, I'm quite confident we'll come away with the points tonight. Tremendous strength from Willie Poach in there. Yeah, it is. He's got a lot of power and uh, a lot of experience too. And uh, he called on all of his power there to get across the line. And it's a great uh, get a 12 point buffer. And what's the, the threat do you see coming the, from the bull side? Oh, uh, look, they, they've got, they're strong all over the park and they're big men up front. I think we need to be strong around the mark area and control it from there and get our line speed up, and then we'll be in good position then. Thanks. Thank you. Mark O'Neill named in the original squad of 20, not uh, used tonight by. Tony Smith, the Leeds Rhinos coach. Good tackle by Ian Henderson. Burrow, ball in field, and uh, no way through for Nick Scruton. Getting through a ton of work, isn't he, Ian Henderson? Well, he's working overtime. Good set. This is uh, Millard and Sinfield with the kick straight down the middle. Marcus St. Hilaire flicks it into the arms of. Carl Price, one, two, three, four, five. Leeds defenders then converged on the big man. Here is Ben Harris now for the Bradford Bulls. They put five defenders into that tackle, Eddie, because they know if they get on a roll on the first tackle and a quick play of the ball, which the Bulls can invariably do, they're very hard to stop. They take you to the end of the field, and all of a sudden you're on your own line under pressure. You've got to control that first one. Serious injury here for some Rhino. Yes, clash of heads. It's uh, Chef Walker. Well, it's pretty hard to, uh, to see where Walker gets it unless it's a stray boot. It doesn't appear to be anything there, but... Stanley put his hand to his head, though, didn't he, straight as he went <laughs> into the floor? Don't really see any uh, any collision. There it is. Oh, maybe uh, he's Refer a hard is a hard man to uh, to stop. Chef Walker says I'm okay, and the referee wisely is calling Let's time go. off while uh, Walker is checked out. Third play it's good ball. work from Stanley Jean, wasn't it, to uh, make the official aware. Great defence oh. from Kevin Sinfield. Bradford having a uh, difficulty in uh, breaching this Leeds line, aren't they? For sure, um, Leeds know that's where they've got to put their effort. They don't have to put their effort in necessarily when they've got the ball. They're playing all right that way. It's defending. And again, if Lee Smith's happy to take kicks like that, relatively unchallenged. Smith will play the ball to Maguire. Here is the latest try scorer for Leeds, the second one of the night, Willie Poaching. Leeds ahead here on a ground that... Uh, Bradford boasts the best home Third. record in the Super League, only 20 Go. defeats in 11 years, either on this ground or at Valley Parade. Well, that is a mistake from Leeds. This is a chance for the Bulls as they spin it wide to Shontane Harpy. Great defence again, though, from Leeds. Well, Anderson certainly got a hand to it. Whether it was 2-1, and one, it's hard to say. It happened so quickly, as everything has done tonight at Otzel. Really, that's been a classic game. You've got to start thinking that what's going to happen in the last 10 minutes? They've got to be out on their feet. Oh. Messing around to the floor. Yistin Harris. Oh, and uh, Henderson is turned on his back. Here is Johnson. Gets the ball away to Ben Harris. Couldn't get the pass out wide to Carl Price. There's Marcus St. Hilaire. Now, Andy Lynch. Justin Harris keeps it going. Deacon forward and wide to Vinacolo. Oh, great cover defence there. Donald and Maguire got themselves well across. It was a good floating pass. 
And Deacon with the crossfield kick, looking for big Carl Price. But it is not Carl Price, but young Danny Williams who comes up with the goods. What a take. Timed it to near perfection. Oh, it went backwards. Oh, knock on. Big call from Mr. Ganson. Certainly was. Another big call from the officials tonight. <laughs> well, that, that definitely went backwards. Certainly lost it backwards, if anything. It was a Bradford hand, Justin Harris, that had the knock on. Bradford, the Bulls won't Bradford mind. Okay. Will they do a set move around the base? Ball is out eventually, Deacon finds Ben Harris. Oh, and it went backwards. Shontaine Harpy hangs on. That was nearly an awful error by Bradford on the first tackle. Here is Harris. Poor pass, it bounces to Carl Price, but he's good at picking those up. What a pick-up on the half volley. <laughs> but you have to admire this Leeds Rhinos defence tonight so far. Justin Harris. Stanley Jean! Back it goes to Harris again, and he floats it wide to Leslie Barnacolo. Oh, Chef Walker did well. Stood his ground. Pressure still not off. St. Hilaire, Stanley Jean, senior in his face very quickly. Back it goes to Deacon. Deacon takes the tackle, leads, scrambling in defence and doing it well thus far. Henderson, Lynch. Gets the ball away somehow, Yiston Harris, Stanley again, over the top, straight into the arms of Gareth Ellis. Lead survive, a little scared, lose the ball, no. Went backwards. Well, it certainly ricocheted away, but he was very quick, was the little half-back, Rob Burrow. Well, that fully yes. deserved a try for Bradford, they kept the ball alive. And Gareth Ellis came to the rescue. A little over-the-top pass, and that's play on. Oh, he's going to put the scrum down. Oh, it's a penalty to Leeds. Well, it looked one-on-one, -on -one, and it's getting very, very fratchy out there. That's one-on-one -on -one to mine. Well, how has he given that as a penalty? But if you looked at his body language, he wasn't clear. He looked for some help from the yeah. sideline, and in the end, he had to just make the best we guess he could. It's speeded up, hasn't it? The Bulls' defence now really ripping in, Eddie. They are. Hold, hold. The Leeds get their first penalty after 52 minutes. Miller, Scruton. It's important now the Rhinos first. make good use of this hold. field position. Hold. Try to get a double set of six if they can. Miller to Maguire, here is Peacock. When you've got a lead at 12-0, you game. can control the game, make sure that uh, you just keep turning your opposition around. Bailey turns, brushes away Henderson or tries to. Langley gets him low down. Millard waits the dummy half. Angled run from Maguire, just couldn't get the ball away to Scruton under immense pressure from Ian Henderson. Here's Sinfield, comes wide to Keith Senior. Senior grounded, tackle number five, Burrow. Sinfield, jinking one way, then the other, stabbing the kick in, picked up underneath his own post by Paul Deacon, who loses it. Back to one. Watch the tackle count clean, does Mr. Ganson. And he's got it right. Millard definitely had a lunch for that one. Oh, they've passed on the line, and they've got away with it. That was near suicide. Sheer panic going through the heads of the Bradford players at the moment. St. Alain not impressed with the tackle. Here's Stanley Jean again. Second movement! Come on, boys. You've got both teams there, Eddie, trying to lift to another level. Bradford to try and get back into the match and Leeds hopefully to kill off the Bulls. Keep coming! A couple of substitutions for the Bulls at the moment. Newton back on, maybe to energise them and provide some creativity in the middle of the field. As Langley takes tackle, number four. There is Newton. Fresh legs, finds Lynch. Lynch offloads, bounces to Deacon. Deacon then. Onto Fielden. Whoa, Fielden passes it to Senior. Senior knows how important it is. He wasn't going to have anything to do with trying to offload. He knows they're in a good position now. Immense pressure from the Rhinos giving them that chance. And here is Gareth Ellis. 
Sanko. Wonderful defence on show here from Leeds. Good position by the big centre, Keith Senior. Had to. Burrow. Will they think about a one point, maybe? Burrow to Scruton. Lynch gets him down. Three tackles gone, three remaining, ten metres away from the line with Maguire. Here is little Rob Burrow, trying to pinch another one. Tackle by Stanley Jean, finished off by Paul Deacon. It's with Maguire. Now it's Sinfield. Here's Ellis. Good defence from Ben Harris. Last tackle for the Rhinos. Sinfield, wide, Williams. Held up, short of the line, he lost it forward. Time off. Quick thinking, the thinking there by off. Kevin Sinfield. It took on the short line. It looked at least there was a problem in regards to. They thought they were going to go for the kick. Thought he may have just caught this Bradford outfit napping, but the defence throughout has been nothing short of perfect. It's the turnover here. Remarkable, Phil, isn't it? That these two sides who attack, attack, the two best attacking teams in the competition, and tonight we're praising their defence. Well, there's two sides, isn't there, to a game of rugby league, and they're showing that they can play both of those sides. They have to hang on. The Bulls have shown that character in the past. Here comes Big Field, and they need to get to the other end of the field. They score very rarely from within their own half, and here comes Myers. They'll just charge the way simply upfield. And the left hand side, Harpe and Viner Cornell, that's the big threat that Leeds face. Terry Newton to Deacon, it's a long ball, and Harris waited for it, lost it. Cannot believe it. Neither can he. That could be can the turning make? point of the game. He was away, he's not the fastest person in the world, but he had them on the rack, and he just lost the marbles. Could not control it, he can't believe it. And the crowd here, and it's a big one, absolutely stunned if you're a Bulls fan. Oh. Well, it is a big crowd, and uh, the Bradford supporters are beginning to bite their fingernails. Sands of time not exactly running out just yet, there's still 24 minutes or thereabouts to go. But it's Leeds who are... Coming forward again with Williams. He thought about the offload, the youngster, but got pushed back. Great defence from Myers and Newton. This is Millard, now it's Gareth Ellis. Bit of a change in tactics as well from the uh, play the ball area. Leeds quite content to just farm it out, especially when Millard's, ar Millard's around. Not so much running from dummy half as we saw in the first. Burrow flicks the ball to Peacock. He's broken the Bradford line. Harpy gets him down with help from Vinacolo. 18 metres away from the Bradford Bulls line. Millard to Burrow. Walker will score another for Leeds. Shit Walker for the Rhinos. They seem to have just a little bit too much for Bradford tonight. And the Rhinos open up a 16-point gap. Chev Walker, future not settled, turned down a contract this week. They might have to add a naught or two. Beautiful work on that short blind side. The offload from Rob Burrow. He didn't even look at the opposition. Watch him, he looked there, bang. He knew where he was going to get it. Sucked in Deacon. Well, this guy's put himself in the shop window tonight. Speculation as to where he's going. Could it be with the rah -rahs? Who knows? The short side player was the one that's killed them. They came across to the left, they've shifted it back to the right. And the vision there from the Leeds players to recognise a simple 3v2 opportunity. Some people say rugby league players aren't that bright, but that instant recognition is a high sign of intelligence. And the runner, Rhinos had it right then. Chev Walker, six times a Great Britain international. 83rd try in 169 appearances for the Rhinos now and Kevin Sinfield has been faultless with his kicking the first two with wind at his back this one wind in the face doesn't matter it doesn't matter Sinfield gives Leeds an 18 point advantage and that could be too far for Bradford quick thinking there dummy half play quite superb as soon as they proved themselves then, you can see Deacon had not filled in, he held back. As soon as he was sucked in, Barrow says, take it, and the big fella said, I will take the TRY. Great play. 
Quarter of the match remaining, Brian Noble. Can Bradford come back? Absolutely. Three scores is nothing in today's game, and it was on the back of a Bradford error. You know, Yeston was in the clear, maybe was going to post six points for the, for the Bulls, so they've got to keep believing, they're going to have to move the ball a little bit. But lay that preparatory groundwork by running around the rock and getting Leeds on the back foot as well. The Leeds are continuing to do against Bradford. But Bradford aren't as penetrative going forward as the Leeds, are, uh, Leeds Rhinos are so far, Phil. No, and I'm just going to ask Brian again, how do you score against this Rhino side? I know it's been an hour, the Bulls have been trying the hardest, but what do they need to do to come up with a try, Brian? Well, what they need to do is get the ball on the fringe and have their halves running at people with short balls. But they need to also lay the platform first, as Leeds have done, which is just means get the Bradford middle people on the back foot, find a couple of offloads around the rook, and have some of their dangerous runners running at the Leeds people one-on-one -on -one as well. Sinfield claps his hands, asks for a big effort as we approach the final quarter of this absorbing contest at Odsall, which at the moment is going Leeds Rhino's way. If they win here tonight, it'll be a three-point gap between themselves and Bradford, and they'll have closed the gap on Saints at the top of the table, and Wigan can do the competition and themselves a big favour, of course, tomorrow night at the JJB Stadium, the match you can see with us here on Sky Sports 1. We are with you from 7 o'clock tomorrow night for Wigan Saints. It's a big weekend for the Super League, this. Here is Stanley Jean. Go gets the ball away to Terry Newton. He offloads also to Jamie Langley, but uh, not much ground forward by the Bulls then. Stanley G now will attack the defensive line again. Ooh, nearly offloaded there. Just wobbled as he got through it. But this Leeds defence has been superb, hasn't it, throughout this night. Tony Smith, I know, has been working hard, and he's made it quite clear that it, they haven't been playing at the best. They know that. Leeds have it back, Bradford got in a right tangle again on the last tackle. And Peacock was the man who came to the Rhinos' rescue. Scott Donald is wrestled to the ground by Yistin Harris. Here is Williams. Well, there's all the hard work that Bradford's had to put up, especially in the second half in defence. Maybe it's time that Leeds may just keep them napping, you know, sort of uh, missed tackle, good run from deep, and again, good work from Lee Smith. Inching their way towards halfway again. Here is Burrow, gets away from Stanley Jean, can't get away from Big Joe Van Gennart. Last tackle for Leeds. The kick from Danny Maguire, cross field, collected by Carl Price. Now, can he get ahead of steam up? No, it's great defence again from Leeds. Kick and chase has been good as well from Leeds. You know, Brian, you must be... <laughs> you've got to admire Jeez. such good tactics that Leeds have especially done in the second half. Well, they're just simple. They've not changed that much, uh, Mike, in, in all fairness. What they've done is managed to speed up around the rock and catch Bradford's bigger people on the, a little bit on the back foot. They've done a half run. They've not changed in the second half. They've ignored the conditions and the wind conditions, and they've just leathered the ball. Now it's Bradford having to chase the game and find some similar things. Leeds Rhinos have now not conceded a point for over 140 minutes of Rugby League, 80 minutes of the cup tie last week, 62 and a half here tonight. And with defence like that, it is difficult to see a way through for the Bradford Bulls. Well, to be fair to Van Gennar, you have to try to keep the offload at 18-0. They've got to start testing their arm and just maybe taking huge risks. Was that Peacock trying to sidestep Sean Tain Hart here then? <laughs> yeah, I think he's in the vortex. This is Sinfield. Second point. Been a very good performance from Leeds thus far. 63 minutes gone, 18-0 they lead. Maguire to Jamie Jones Buchanan. Eventually, Bradford get to him. Up, the shape of Van Gennar and Fielden. This is Matt Diskin. Here is Shane Millard. They look a lot more vigorous, don't they, coming forward leads at the moment than Bradford. Bradford a little pedestrian. A lot of enthusiasms out there, and I, I just really feel that Bradford are getting out on their feet. They're running out of steam. Important tackle by Harpy and Myers. As Chev Walker waits for Lee Smith to play the ball, which he does. Here is Sinfield. There's the dab to the in goal, but too deep. I think he was going to try to hit the upright there. He shakes, shakes his it. head. He's annoyed with himself with the kick. <laughs> Certainly is. Now then, can we get... Length of the field. Carl Price. Very well done, Jamie. 
Still got plenty of time. He didn't as though he's into the last 10, but maybe something a little bit different. Maybe a scoop from Demi Half, little kick through Grubber, or maybe a glance over the top. Bradford need to score, though, to give themselves hope with a quarter of an hour to go. That's a good run from Newton. Halted by Chev Walker, gets the ball away, but it's pinched by Matt Diskin out of the arms of Jamie Langley. Here's Scruton. Such an important movement, you know, when you can just steal the ball. Jamie Jones Buchanan. Demoralising for the opposition as well. Sinfield fires the pass to Keith Senior. Senior trying to go inside, Ben Harris does well defensively then. Millard, Sinfield, Maguire, Lee Smith playing an increasing role in this lead side. Last tackle, Diskin, 20 metres out. Maguire side foots the ball to the in goal area. Ooh, and Leslie Vinacolo took the gamble, it came off. Donald was hunting. In the middle, nice option as well. We all realised that. Uh, on the corners here at Otzel, used to be the speedway track, it rises up about three metres. That's a pretty big slope, that's Everest, isn't it? Well, I Brian, what is the exact <laughs> raise of the corners, if any? Well, we, we train there, and I promise you, Tensing Norke and Edmund Hillary don't need to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, it's no more different than any other, any other field. Second here. Well, I must be watching the wrong field, then. <laughs> well, I don't know, Phil Clark and uh, company are doing the uh, Three Peaks Challenge in a couple of weeks' time. Maybe they should just do the Four Corners of Oxel. I'll tell you what, they'll be happy. I wish they thought it was only that far. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> Dave Hadfield's just been practising walking up and down those. <laughs> Here is uh, Leslie Vinacolo. There is no way through for Bradford tonight. Swarming defence, good tactics, working as a unit. A lot of talk out there from uh, the Rhinos. Fielder knew he wasn't expecting that. Seniors worked hard. Five. They all have. Both sides. Newton with a dab Hold down on. the line. Lee Smith picks it up. He's been fantastic, Eddie, in my opinion. I thought Five. when they lost Richie Mathers to knee injury, it really might affect the Rhinos. And Richie Mathers had us a fantastic year so far Turn until he was sadly injured. But oh. Lee Smith, his work rate, he's almost been equivalent to two players. He's done that much work. Indeed so. And I think fullback is his preferred position, isn't it? So well, he's certainly shown it tonight. And, uh, you know, it, we've got nothing to do with the man of the match. But he would have to be a great contender. There's a man that, unfortunately, has finished his career at, uh, at Leeds. He'll be going down under to the Gold Coast to play alongside Brian Carney in 2007. Oh, that bounces back and it's back to zero again in the tackle count. Diskin was first to react. Here is Bailey. Leeds looking to put this game to bed. Diskin again from 20 metres out. Sinfield, space here down the right for Leeds as Maguire tries to find it. Gives it to Lee Smith, off the fingertips of Jamie Peacock. A golden chance to wrap the game up is gone. But is the game beyond Bradford anyway? It's always difficult when you're going to offload when someone's running on the angle and you know that your teammate is just stood there. I think he, was, he couldn't move a muscle. He had it stuck in reverse, didn't yeah, he? he? He's could trying not to find move. that forward gear. Out. Draining experience playing. Super League at this pace and at this intensity. Yeah. It's a tribute to the, the players' physical fitness that they're out there. Second, okay, and they are Brian. playing it as tough, as quick as the very first minute. This is Fielden. Third. Here. We've seen some magical games already through this season. Oh, it's oh. a penalty to Leeds. He was not happy. I thought he was going to have a brain explosion then, he brought the foot back. Well, the referee's interpretation is that he tried to move off the mark. Yep. As you say, it's down to the interpretation. Don't think it's going to be Bradford's night somehow. Hold here. Hold here. Only four penalties in the match. That was lead second. This is Jamie Jones Buchanan. 11 minutes to go. Time the enemy for Bradford now as much as Leeds. Millard 
Harris wrestles him to the floor. At the end of this game, Eddie, I would love to see the actual play time. It must be so high. Maguire flicks the ball back. Peacock, Myers and Third, Langley get to him. Maguire. Well, this is where I'll be looking for the one. Trump Bailey. Right up in front of the post. Bailey. Never interested in one, looking for four. He's got it. Bailey. Ryan Bailey gets the four-pointer. Leeds will get the two points in the Super League ladder. And they close the gap on the Saints at the top of the table. Ryan Bailey with a marauding run. Sheer power. They have the numbers. He's pushed off Johnson. Newton was there. But he squirmed around. The referee's checking for a possible obstruction, I think, on Terry Newton, but I just think Bailey deserves a try here. No, he's gone through. No worries about that. He has another chance to get him anyway, doesn't he? Five metres from the line. Bailey's determination, what an impact. Started on the substitutes bench today, and I think sent on with an instruction, make a difference. Boy, he's done that. Okay. It'll be T.I.Y., Phil, no doubt about it. Try for the Rhinos and Ryan Bailey. Ryan Bailey now, only his second try of the season. Terrific run, barnstorming run late on, and Bradford had no answer to it. And Leeds Rhinos, I think they're going to take home the spoils. Well, they have the numbers there, but the ability to spin out, it's a great tactic. Well, you know that everybody's going to go high, no one went for the legs. Just try to spin out of the tackle and bang, straight in. Great effort. Sinfield hasn't missed from three out on the touchline. He doesn't miss from nearly in front. And the Rhinos ahead by 24 points to nil. Big brother Brian is alongside Steve McNamara. It's Tony Smith's night. And Ryan Bailey with the fourth. Leeds try and Steve McNamara with a problem. Walker collects the shallow kickoff, gives it in field to Millard. Nine and a half minutes to go. Leeds on their way to a great win against Bradford, the third consecutive win at Odsall. I don't think that Tony Smith, the Leeds coach, will be looking to just uh, close this game down either. Well, why should they? They've, uh, they've got the cushion of 24 points. And frankly, Steve, apart from maybe once or twice in the first half, the Bulls have rarely looked like they were going to penetrate this Leeds defence. Well, they missed the opportunity, especially when Houston Harris, remember, made that break at a crucial moment in the game. And he just lost control of it. That could have turned things around. And it's simple errors like that that make sure you pick up losing pay. Here's Vinacola, you're asking how long the ball had been in play during this game, Steve-O, 62 and a half minutes that is out a... of 71 and a half. That is unbelievable. And the pressure on Leslie Vinacolo. It's a knock-on by the big man. Oh, that was reefed out, but did it go backwards? By the way, they've given it an... There's an error against this big fella. They haven't done much luck, especially in the second half. But give credit to this Rhinos defence, they've gone into their faces, they've really, really worked hard. And they've worked together as a unit. They're looking to really finish them off here. Oh, the pass from Maguire to Williams just made the young man stretch a bit. And he knocked on on the first tackle. That will not please Tony Smith, but the overall performance tonight will. Uh, Steve, you say that Bradford haven't had much luck, well, one or two calls from the referee have gone against them but leads tonight super they've been magnificent yeah. they have and we often talk about team spirit talk about the ability to to work for each other and they've shown that it has been a good tackle they've all been in congratulating each other and they've got back this is brad myers i just wonder there were a couple of players on the original team sheet who had to be taken out because of this virus that's running through Odsal, which we knew nothing about until just before the kickoff. I just wonder whether it has affected one or two of the other players who are out there tonight as well. It hasn't been a Bradford-esque performance. Now, maybe 
Leslie Vinacolo will produce something later on to disprove that. No, great defence again. Yistin Harris, a knock on by Lynch. It's been that sort of a night for Bradford. Let's find out from Dave Hatfield who the man of the match is. We think Shantane Happ has been as good as anyone for a Bradford side. It's really rather struggling at the moment. Chev Walker's been good as well, but no real doubt about a choice. He scored a brilliant try, set up another one with some wonderful work down the blind side. Maybe possibly the best tackle of the game as well. We can't look past him tonight. Okay. Our man of the match, Rob Burrow. Looking, shot cut, yeah. Rob Burrow wins the Gillette Sports Pack as man of the match. Very well deserved for the little fellow, but... Uh, and with Phil Clark, Lee Smith must have run them very close. Well, I don't, oh, think, Rob's, I don't think Rob's started shaving yet, so we might share it out with Lee. <laughs> you never know. That was a forward pass, it appeared so. I tell you, Hells had a massive influence on this game. The return of Kevin Sinfield for Leeds is huge for them. You know, he's a great player in his own right, but what he does for this team in particular is outstanding. He finds a kick play when the other two can't, he allows yeah. the other two halves, if you like, to run the ball whilst he organises. And on top of that, Brian, we've just seen him doing the cover defence, coming over just like an old-fashioned loose forward shot. And he took out the big fella, Leslie Vinacolo. He really has been missed by the Leeds outfit, hasn't he, when he was out injured? He's a super player, isn't he? There's Lee no Bradford were waiting for the kick, and Maguire cuts them open up the middle, fires the pass out wide, and it missed everybody. Well, it was brilliant one minute, and the next second from Maguire, the pass... Just a little too ambitious. Here, well, the raise down from the fullback, Lee Smith, said it all. I was there on the inside. It's easy to say that. Well, at 24 0, I'm sure that uh, it really won't go down as uh, a poor error. Five minutes to go. Leeds close the gap on St Helens at the top of the table. Saints at Wigan tomorrow night. Our Saturday night. Live date with you from the Super League on this bank holiday Monday, uh, this bank holiday weekend is Wigan against Saints. On Monday, it's Salford against uh, the Harlequins. Seven o'clock, that on Sky Sports 2. You've got to applaud both sides as well, okay? Oh, error after error. And they're just tired physically as well as mentally. As I say, credit both sides. It's been a, a good effort from Bradford for a fair amount of the time, but the sheer quality of of Leeds just keep coming at them all the time. Uh, I think that both sides will be happy that the dressing rooms these days are down on the pitch side. Remember, in the olden days, you used to have to walk about 158 steps. I don't think any of these players would have been able to make it. This is Diskin again for Leeds. Must be a wee while since Bradford were nilled on their own ground. And as if... By magic, I can tell you, they've only been nilled once previously at home in Super League by St Helens, June the 27th, 2003, 35 points to nil. Well, it's not been quite that bad tonight. Well done to Ian Proctor. Anything you want to know about Rugby League, he's your man. Sinfield, infield to Burrow, this is Ellis. That's play on. It is play on, should be, Ben Harris, Bailey got to him though, Harris. stopped the momentum, Sinfield finished him off. But notice how Leeds, OK, they come up with the error, the ball has gone, gone through, Checking. there was five of them turning round straight away to ensure they got the cover sorted out. This is Harris, here is Langley, three minutes to go. Keeps it going to Shantane Harpy. Myers will go up the middle. Ball goes to ground. Knock on. Nothing's gone right for Bradford tonight. Steve McNamara will be frustrated. 24 0, Brian. You've only done it once yourself in Super League. You've lost with a nil scoreline against you at home. What do you say at the end of a night like this? Well, you dust yourself down and you get Humpty Dumpty back together again, don't you? And it's next week. <laughs> the reality is they've not okay. been that bad. They've chased the game and they've made some errors late on in the game. They've come across a very determined lead side tonight who have managed... If you remember the first half, the first half an hour, the first 35 minutes, Bradford could have had a couple of tries and, the, you know, the game could have been totally different. And they'll take the positives out of this, Bradford, because they have done some good things. Sinfield, yes, senior, senior to the corner, stepped out of the challenges. 
It's another Leeds try. That wraps it up. 28 points to nil. The kick to come from Kevin Sinfield. Don't back against him from kicking it. And it has been a hugely impressive night for the Leeds Rhinos. Keith Senior has been magnificent tonight in defence and he just wraps it up with a great try in the last couple of minutes. Keith Senior and Leeds, it's a great win for them. Just stretching out off balance, Ben Harris takes full advantage and this will really please the big centre, Keith Senior. He's back to top form and when you know you can get through the opposition and have the speed to go into the corner. It's a confidence boost. He's happy. Tongues out. T.R.Y. He's played in more Super League games than anyone else. Keith Senior, this is his 261st out of 280 possible in the last 11 seasons. And his appetite goes from strength to strength. Fantastic try from Senior. Just stepped out of the challenges. And Kevin Sinfield... Well, he's kicked impeccably tonight. He will not want a blemish alongside his name either. He has landed every goal. He has answered every call that's been made of him. Converted the tries of Burrow, Poaching, Walker and Bailey. Can he now add the extras to Keith Senior's try? This for a 30-0 scoreline. 30-0 it is. A big win for Leeds, a confidence-boosting win for the Rhinos, a magnificent night for Leeds. Well, the Super League took a breather last week for the Challenge Cup, start of the second half of 2006, and the Rhinos have showed they've got what it takes. The full-time siren came before Paul Game's Deacon over. kicked the ball, Lee Smith just hammers the ball onto the top of the stand just in case a wonderful display from Leeds tonight they went toe to toe in the first half it was a long time before the first points came when they did they only came to the Rhinos they have won 30 points to nil